What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Shoot the Shh. I'm your host, Anthony. Uh, and today, we are actually on location. It, it, obviously, it's not our studio. But I'm with, I'm with the original OG, Sammy. How you doing, Sammy? Oh, well, yeah, me and Baby Yoda, we're out here, we're live, we're chilling. Welcome to the AZ. Oh, we got Ed here. We got a special, special guest. Ed, tell us, tell us how you're feeling. I don't think he wants to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, today we're here to... Uh... He's going to come say hi to the everything else. <laughs> I know. He sees, he sees all the cameras and everything. He's all new to him. Just don't knock it over, kitty. Go. Go, go. Uh, do you want to get down? Ed, do you want to please get down? Please, Ed. I'd appreciate that. Go. Yeah, Ed. Ed. Go. I'm trying to get Ed off. I'm sorry. And it got Ed. Yeah, yeah, you fucked that up. That was all you. There it goes, camera one. Death by suicide. Death by suicide. Rolling. Anyway, uh, yeah, hey guys. Uh, we're in studio. First time in a long time since six months, I, I believe. Maybe seven. It's Probably. Time. It's been a time. Yeah, I think the last time we did an in studio podcast was like March. Um, welcome back. Uh, it's good to be out here in Arizona. And Sammy welcoming, inviting me into his home. Yeah. How you been, man? It's been a long time since we see each other in person. Yeah, it's been. A, it has been a while. We have done a lot of uh, zooming. Yeah. One another, and uh, it's been it's been cool. Um, today is one of the gloomy days in Arizona, so you don't have that wonderful light just piercing through the windows. But it is a. Uh, it has been nice because the weather is finally under 100 degrees, so that is a win for me. It, 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 even though the the weather is at um, it, it's at it's gloomy, but it's still very dry hot out there. Yeah, it's pretty warm. It's yeah, pretty warm. Uh, and if you have if you're watching this live, I apologize for making any funny faces. I got a bit of an eye problem currently that we're sorting through. So uh, stay stay, stay yeah. tuned. It is, yeah. Um, no, we we wanted to obviously obviously this is a podcast we've been wanting to bring back for some time, uh, and. You know, amidst everything going on in the world, we just thought you guys can take a few minutes to escape everything, uh, whether it be go what's going on with the pandemic, with the election, whatever it is. Uh, if you're just having a, a bad day, come listen to me and Sam, Sam Ramble about life. Life. <laughs> Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. No, this has been something we wanted to... to Don't you dare go up there, Ed. <laughs> this come. is... Join me. This has been something we wanted to bring back for some time now. Get down. No, no, no. No, oh God, you're going to knock over the tripod and I'm going to kill that cat probably. Never mind. He's a good cat. Um, yeah, don't kill him. Let him kill you. I will not kill him. I will not harm any animal. Um, Thank you. Baby Yoda approves. Baby Yoda approves. No, uh, it, it's just been a while, man. We've, like I said, we've been doing Zoom and... I don't think we filmed a podcast much like this one, or how we're doing it with the two cam set up, and and just I, I, I sure as hell know we haven't used the board. Yeah. What I intentionally bought it for, you know. So I mean, it's, yeah. it's good to finally use the board and bring it out. And yeah. Do you, you have any sound effects ready for us? I do, uh, but I don't know which ones are available right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to hit one random one. Okay, let's see let's what we have. The Let's see. Let's see what we have. I don't. I don't know. I can't hear uh, anything at this at this point. So. Oh, you um, can't hear. Uh, I I can hear us, and that's oh. that's about it. But. Oh, so if you press the sound effect right now, you're not gonna know what this. Oh, there's that. There's that one. That was a drum roll. <laughs> oh. So. Hey, why are you, why are you scratching over there, buddy? <laughs> Use your scratching post. Yeah, uh... Just because your parents aren't home doesn't mean you can do whatever the heck you want. Whatever, whatever the heck you want, man. And we're back after some technical, technical... Let's make sure everything was working. Yeah, no, I was just making sure it all works. Everything's good. Everything sounds good. Um, so, yeah, man, it's it was a nice, long, five-and-a-half-hour drive to get out here. Yeah, what was uh, what was your favorite song you listened to on the way up? I don't know, man. I mean, I listened to so many songs, I just I didn't know what... You know what song I was listening to the other day? What? Oh, damn, now I can't think of its name. 
Speaking of songs, I mean, System of a Down just came up with two new ones. Oh, they did? After 15 years without making music. I didn't know they put out new music. They put out two new ones, I think, yesterday or the day before, and it's the first time in 15 years that they Well, I mean, out. you know there's turmoil in America when uh, two things are happening. Oh, yeah, I mean, I know that. you got System coming back, and you've had um, Rage Against the Machine had a, had a tour lined up. Yeah, they had a big tour lined up. They were supposed to headline Coachella. Yeah. I know we're not yeah. supposed to be talking about these unhappy things, but it just makes me laugh. You know, hey, now, you know when I you was, got the... I was really stoked for uh, for System or Rage to come back because I really wanted to see them in concert. No, bro. I'm really, I was really stoked on System. When we saw that one System cover band... Oh, back, Toxicity. Toxicity was at like back in like November or December. Yeah, that was at uh, House of Blues. House Anaheim. of Blues, yeah. That was lit, bro. I've been wanting to go to a concert since then. Yeah, I, I got to see System twice, actually. What, did I see him twice? No, once. I seen him once in concert. I wish. I wish. That's and, one of my uh, bands I want to see. Yeah, it was a it was a good show, but um, yeah, System always puts on a really good show. I don't know why that is, but they they are just a, a good band and have good music. So. Bro, I can't think of this song now. It's an Iron Maiden song. Oh, How Would Be the Name, bro? That song was I was listening to that the other day. The banger, and it reminded me of you. That was the that was like the one of the Haunt Season songs of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Because we went to the gallows, yeah. The gallows, yeah. It was fun. Um, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was. A, it was a good drive. I mean, it took five. <laughs> I mean, we hit no traffic coming up, which was good. And then I think we made only like three pit stops. We got breakfast. We filled up with gas, and then we did a rest stop, uh, just to stretch. But other than that, it was it was a smooth drive up here, and I was very surprised on that. Did you guys stop in Blythe? No. Courtside. No. Those are the two best places to stop. Um, I was just focused on getting us up here. Yeah, my goal was to get to Arizona. My my goal, you know why I I didn't let, <laughs> I, I came up with my uncle and he's at uh, his daughter's house right now. But um, the the only reason I didn't let him drive is because I want to say in my life at least once I've driven to Arizona. That's a good goal. It is because I wanna I wanna start making uh places that I've driven to. So far, Arizona is probably the farthest I've ever driven ever. Where's the, where's the next? Where do you, you want to go next? Um, maybe if I ever want to do it, but I might, I might, I probably just will fly there all the time. Maybe Washington, or uh, yeah, Washington to go visit my grandma. That'd be a, it'd be a pretty uh, pretty long journey. It's like a fifteen hour drive. Yeah, well, they do. They split up in like a day or two, but yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd be a fun journey, but I'm willing to do it. Yeah, because. Cat's playing with something over there, by the way. <laughs> it's fine. I trust that it, it's not important. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good drive. Um, good tunes. Uh, big tune? Big tunes. Okay, now she's... What is it? Tape? I don't know it's, what it is. It's something. Did you have like a piece of like styrofoam with the board? No. So that's probably something she found on the floor. Yeah, it's probably something. Hey, it's keeping her occupied, so keeping him occupied. Yeah, it's keeping him occupied, so it's a it's a win. It's a win, but um, and hey, he's having fun. So yeah, uh, but no, other than that, good drive. Uh, and then you know, uh, Thursday we got in. I think around three thirty or four. Uh, went to my cousin's house. Uh, well, we went to my cousin's work to pick up uh, because her daughter is uh only a couple months old. Goes to daycare right across the street from her work. So we picked up um, her daughter. And then we went to my cousin's house to hang out until everyone got home. Um, but that was that was fun. Got to spend time, see my cousin's house finally. Uh, and then Thursday night I came here and watched Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 2. and Slept. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. I was up watching some movies. But uh, I was really excited for today because today, uh, I, before uh, this recording, this, I actually... This was the first time in like seven months that I actually finally got to go to a movie theater. Yep. Now I saw Tenet. Tenet was a really good movie. Very confusing movie, but it was good. Well, well, prior to that, what was the last movie you saw? Was it Onward or was it... Uh... Onward was not in theaters. I saw that at home. I saw Onward in theaters. I saw it at home because uh, they had released it on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, they released it like a couple weeks after the theaters. Yeah, so I had waited for it to go on Disney+. Oh, no, I think I bought it on Vudu. Yeah, I think you have it on Vudu. For an early access thing because I wanted to watch it. Uh, but that was like one of the last new. No, the last new movie I watched before that was I think Bill and Ted. Yeah, 
but not in theaters. The last movie I saw in theaters was actually with you. We did a double feature for Visible Man in the Hunt. Yeah, because I don't remember if it was Invisible Man in the Hunt the last one I saw, or was it Onward? Because I know I went and watched Onward by myself. Yeah, that you probably did Onward. Yeah. I don't know. Because uh, I know the last one we saw in theaters was the double feature we did with Invisible Man in the Hunt. Yeah. Which were both Blumhouse movies. So we were like, either one of them is going to suck, and one of them is going to be really good. They're both going to suck. to be okay. I, yeah, I mean, the way, the, this is how I always put Blumhouse. It's like, their movies either are really good. Uh, Halloween 2018. Or they're really shitty. Truth or Dare. Yes. Or Fantasy Island. I haven't seen Fantasy Island yet. Yeah, so I I'm just going to save you time because I haven't even seen it. Don't watch it. Well, I know. That's the plan is not to watch it. I just don't know if it's Truth or Dare or is it worse. Truth or Dare was pretty bad. I know. And then they they turned that into a maze at HHN for some reason. Well, which was your favorite? I don't know. I, I think that was, I think it's between uh, The Walking Dead and, and that and your favorite maze. What? Truth or Dare. Truth or, uh, Truth or Dare was part of Whores of Blumhouse. Yeah. And they had sin, uh, Unfriended. And then Ooh, they had the Dark a, Web? Yeah. No, it was just Unfriended. And then it was um, also, uh, they did an original ending with the opening intro yeah. to Blumhouse, yeah. which was into, okay, this catch is knocking everything over. That's his job. <laughs> he just like, he, he was so moved. cool prior to us doing the podcast. And then like he saw everything get set up and just. He's like, oh, I can, let me, let me show them how I play. Let me show them how I play right now. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it was cool to go to the theaters, man. We went to the uh, Alamo Draft, was it Draft House? Yeah, Alamo Draft House. Alamo Draft House here in uh, Arizona. And uh, I had never been to that theater because I know the uh, like the original ones in Texas. Yeah. And so I had never been. It was a very nice theater experience. There was only like me, you, and another person in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Normally it's a little bit more packed, but but like I was telling you, what I like about it is, um, if you're not, if you're under eighteen, you have to be accompanied by an adult. Is that is that for any movie? Any movie, any time. Really? So even if they're showing like a Shrek, like a Disney movie or something. Yeah, you you can't be under eighteen without an adult. I wonder why that is. Is it because it's more of an adult? Yeah, theater. they just want to make it a better like experience because like there's yeah. nothing worse I, I think in my opinion than when you're going to a theater and you got like you know that little pack of thirteen year olds. Yeah, no, that's annoying. And they're all trying to outdo each other. Yeah, that is very annoying. Um, so like I think it's nice when you because like I it's a no cell phone policy. So, yeah, like, they they pretty much told you like you're gonna get one warning after that we're kicking you out. Yeah, no, no cell refund. phone, no talking. I mean, they're a little bit more lenient on the talking because there was no one else in the theater. Well, yeah, because I was I was looking over at you when we were watching Tenant, like telling you my theories and everything, and that yeah. was funny. So, but yeah, it, it, it was it was just cool to sit back in a theater, and and this one was a dine in theater, so they actually let you like order food and 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 uh, you get to order your drinks, and it's like full on like almost like a restaurant too. Yeah, and what I like about it too is their their prices aren't like super bad. Between the both of us, so we both had meals. Yeah, it was only with tip. It was only like fifty bucks, which is not a lot, especially for a movie theater. Yeah, movie theater for a foods. movie theater. I mean, because like the chicken tenders were like thirteen each. Yeah, the sodas were another like five plus like taxes and stuff. It and was, we got free refills. So yeah, and free refills, and they come to you like yeah. So they all come. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, and I had a good time. And Tenet. Again, very confusing movie, but very good movie. Yeah. It's definitely one of those movies you're going to have to watch twice. I was really surprised when you were like, oh, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. At I that mean, one part. It, it was, I don't want to spoil it. Cause no, I, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it. I mean, but. But I was like, I didn't even see that happening until like the other part happens when but, they they can, like, you know what I mean. Yeah. But let's be real. Do you, do you expect less from me? No, I, I don't. I, I feel like you've watched a lot of movies. <laughs> I've watched a lot of movies by now where you kind of just know the basic scenarios of what's going to happen in said movies. Yeah, I just I think maybe because the first time I watched it was after yeah. like a twelve hour work shift. Twelve. Oh yeah, so you were kind of like there but not there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I definitely didn't fall asleep or anything the first time I watched it. Right. Um. So like I was very much like into it and knew it was happening. Right. But like I said, my brain was a little bit not at its peak performance at that time <laughs> yeah i i just i i don't know i mean nolan is known to write uh he, he's a very good director and writer um dark knight trilogy what is your what is your favorite nolan film it's probably between batman begins and dark knight okay. um but I, I i and it's not because it's a batman film but i think what he did with the batman universe now it's something where it's like it, there's a lot of arguments as to what's like the best kind of uh movie that he you know what he did with the Dark Knight trilogy, obviously, like he wanted to make it a more realistic standpoint as far as 
this could happen in real life if we put all these characters in the real yeah. world. And I liked what he did with that. He really gave you like the the challenges and made the villains more realistic and and put them in real life scenarios. So I think what's really underrated is like when you anytime you ask anybody what uh, your favorite Batman movie is, they immediately go to The Dark Knight, which I'm not saying it's a shitty movie. It's a phenomenal movie in my opinion. But I feel Batman Begins is very underrated. Uh, yeah, I feel like Batman Begins is underrated. My favorite Nolan film, though, will always be Interstellar. Interstellar. I think I've watched so I've watched bits and pieces of it, oh. but I know the all pretty much the entire concept of it. Um, yeah, it's a very sad movie towards the end too. Bro, it's sad throughout the entirety of it. Yeah, that that's a he's known for doing that like <laughs> that whole sci-fi kind of fantasy world. Uh, well, yeah, uh, this is what like I feel like if uh, what describes a Nolan film outside of like the Dark Knight movies is like, oh, I'm going to play to a type of genre of film, and then I'm going to add time to it, and so I'm going to make it really confusing for someone to watch. Yeah, I was telling you at like the end of the movie, I was like, he probably confuses himself writing these movies. <laughs> he has to at some points. Unless he knows what he wants. Because like, yeah. I, I was reading an article when this movie came out, Like, even the actors didn't know what was going on half the time when they were filming that movie. They were just saying their lines. Yeah, I mean, especially when he plays with, the way he plays with time. Like I don't know how I don't know how we filmed that. I you know what did he film that practically or yeah it had to have been just put it in like reverse. If you if you look at a lot of the movie, um, a lot of the movie is pretty much the same scenes outside of a couple of interview scenes when when you have uh, Denzel Washington's uh, son go do something else. Yeah, but a, a lot of the like the middle action part parts of it, it it's mostly all pretty much the same scenes yeah and when they when they when they're filming them going backwards and stuff it's just basically reversing the film but here's the tricky part about nolan is nolan is one of the only directors to this day that still uses film to film oh yeah yeah he, he films mostly in like i think like 60 or something yeah and he's one of like many i think scorsese still does that and i know uh i think spielberg might still do that and tarantino i know tarantino does that he films yeah, on, i remember with dunkirk like the best way to watch it was going to be in I think thirty five millimeter. Yeah, that was going to be the most like he wanted it to look. Yeah, yeah, it, it was really cool, and and that's what I like about uh Tarantino too, because he filmed Once Upon a Time in seventy millimeter, yeah. and he actually screens it at his uh, movie theater in Hollywood every now and then, yeah. uh, as long uh, with other movies as well. But I think it's been closed lately because due to the pandemic. But yeah, it, it's been one of my goals that when the when things start opening up again, I actually want to go to that movie theater and maybe watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in seventy millimeter. Yeah, bro. I mean, that's I don't know. I mean, I love Tarantino. But I also love Nolan. So like I can't no, pick, Nolan, like, I can't pick out like who's better. And and that's the thing with both directors though. They actually will take their they'll take a couple years off, take their time to write and 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 vision a great outstanding film yeah. that will likely be nominated for Oscars. I don't doubt in my mind Tenet will get some sort of nomination. What, so this is my question to you because obviously I know this isn't uh you know your film channel or anything. But obviously, we're going to talk about film. Because hey, this we, is this podcast. We're talking about anything. I know we talk about anything and everything. Um, but what do you think is going to happen to the Oscars come February? I don't know, honestly. Because really you've don't. only had you only the movies that like, came out in like <laughs> the beginning Ma of the year. Invisible Man steals the whole show. And then you have Tenet. Like, and I feel like mm, I don't know. I can't think of a movie that came out at the beginning of the year that was. As good as Tenet. So here's my thing about it is like the way I look at it is this. Um, you're going to have because the Oscars said they actually do have enough movies to do the Oscars this year. Yeah. And I feel that is true in some ways because there's a lot of independent films that came out that or there's also some that went straight to Video on demand. demand. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Oscars work this year. I think that was a big thing for people this year too is how the hell are they going to do an oscars this year um kind of same thing goes with the emmys though too because a lot of shows are being delayed yeah d definitely so i i award season alone is going to be the only thing that's not really hurting too much is the music industry yeah because they can still put music out yeah you can still you can record all that from your home and even if you don't record from home you can go into the studio and you can be pretty socially distant. Yeah, because you, you can literally just of, have one at a time and yeah. then sanitize the room and then another person comes in. Because you can record drums and then guitar all different times and then just have the per person come in and record the lyrics. Or she might even be in there with the producer 
because there usually is two, you know, behind the board. And then she or she or he might be in there just to give his creative input. Like, this is how I want this to sound. And yeah, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like I said, the music industry is not hurting at all. You see people. I mean, Ariana Grande released new music. Yeah. Um, System of Down just released new music. ACDC's releasing a new album. Um, these are artists that I've just seen advertised all over Instagram recently. Well, I think this is a great time to release music. You have nothing else to do. Uh, I, I was saying, I think this is uh, the pandemic for at least uh, the Stranger Things writer staff. Um, they said that this was a great opportunity for them to uh, maybe do some rewrites and, and include stuff that they w- were going to try to include, but they didn't know if they had the time for it. So then now this was, has been a good day for them to look back on season four story and just kind of redesign it how they want to. So Yeah, I definitely agree. Like It definitely sucks because obviously being quarantined sucks. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, <laughs> it really does. It really does. I mean, dude, but that's what we're here for. Why do you think I was so excited to go to the movie theaters today? Because none no. of the movie theaters where I live, I had to go out to like fucking orange or I, I had to like drive at least 30, 40 minutes just to go to the movie theaters when yeah. you have one literally five minutes from your house. Well, I, I mean, you're about to see what well, we're going to go to another movie tonight. We're going to another movie tonight. <laughs> and I, and I'm taking advantage of this right now because I mean, one, uh, Tenet was a must when I came down. Like, yeah. I told you, like, when yeah. I come down, like, I want to see Tenet. Well, it was, I mean, it was ideally going to be Black Widow. It was going to be Black Widow. Because Black Widow's re-release was going to be this, this actually, today, Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So that was originally going to be the plan. Like, oh, great. Like, the first movie I, the first movie I get to see coming back was Black Widow. Yeah. And I think we would have honestly snuck in Tenet, too, because I wanted to see Tenet. Yeah. So that would have been, like, two new movies for me. But, yeah. um. I was glad. I was still happy to see Tenet and just to be in a movie theater. Like, I was legit excited. If you guys follow us on Instagram, uh, the day that we did it, which was uh, Friday the 6th, um, I actually posted on Instagram, like, I'm super stoked to be here. Like, it's been so so long since I've been in a movie theater, um, and it was just cool to be in that vibe again. We're going to another movie tonight. It's actually an older movie. Um, you guys shouldn't, if you guys don't know, but uh, Sean Connery passed away last week, which yeah. was a kind of... Kind of a hurt one on me because yeah. I, I did I did like his work, you know, from his work from James Bond uh, to my all-time favorite, which we're going to go see tonight, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, I liked him best on uh, uh, Celebrity Jeopardy. Yes. <laughs> Dude, he even came out and said uh, he talked a little bit about that role, that guy who plays him. Yeah. And he goes, uh, like, that was super last minute. Like, that wasn't until the day of we decided to put that character in, and we didn't even know if it was going to work. He goes... Sean Connery is a true gentleman, but I've always, the way I pictured that role was for him to be this jerk who just hates Trebek and he's just this asshole. And it, for some reason, worked out and a lot of people vibe with it. And I'm like, it's one of the greatest segments Saturday Night Live has ever done. I love their Jeopardy segments. Yeah, they have, you know, you got fucking Will Ferrell, you got the guy who plays, uh, always the guy who plays uh, Sean Connery and always the guy who plays Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Great. Uh, and then they always have usually a, a third celebrity in there. Yeah. Sometimes if it's, the, if it's the host, they'll usually just throw in the host and make them dumb them down a little bit, or if it, they'll just create another celebrity. But yeah, um, but yeah, Sean Connery. Uh, I I was watching Indiana Jones on the uh, the first night of election night, um, and I, I was just remembering his work in that movie. Great movie, uh, Indiana Jones: The Last Crusade. Like I said, is probably my favorite Indiana Jones movie of all time. So you just, like it better than Raiders of the Last Ark? I really do because the relationship between him and his dad is really funny. Yeah. And the way I looked at that relationship, I kind of looked at like my m- me and my dad's relationship, where it's not nearly that much arguing, but there's times where we have a lot of fun like that, you yeah. know. And, I definitely like Raiders of the Last Ark, I think, more than I like The Last Crusade. No, and I think a lot of people's arguments are that way too. They love Raiders of the Lost Ark and and I, I don't I, Raiders of the Lost Ark is great. For me, yeah. I think it'd be three one, uh two four. We'll see how five ends up. <laughs> if Bro, they ever, if what do you mean, film, Crystal Skull? Above all, <laughs> if, if they ever film five, yeah, and if Harrison ever. Ford's still alive, yeah, freaking fingers crossed on that one. If he dies next, I'm gonna be sad. But uh, no, I, I think uh, I, I'm excited to see Last Crusade on the big screen because I've never seen it on the big screen. I've yeah, seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Never seen Temple of Doom or Last Crusade. Yeah. So I'm now gonna be one away just to have seen all of them in the big screen. You know what would give me more joy though? Right now. What is that? To be riding Indiana Jones. That would be fun. Temple. Well, didn't I take you on one of the Roblox ones that was pretty spot on? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. By the way, yeah, uh, we haven't filmed an episode of Shoot the Shit in a very long time. 
uh, over haunt season, we really got into roadblocks. Yeah. Uh, more than we thought we would ever be into it. And Bro, that was one of the funnest nights, though. When the nights, one of the first nights we started playing roadblocks. When yeah. all of us were going through that stupid Disney park. Yeah, we were trying to find. Okay, we, we, we what started it all was we on. On Twitter, I found out they had a Universal Orlando Roblox map, which is actually really spot on from yeah. everyone we talked to who lives out in Orlando and stuff. Um, they said it's pretty spot on. It's a small park. They don't have all the rides, but it's pretty spot on. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, and then I think what really got our excitement more about it is they, we found out that they were going to be doing a Halloween Horror Nights event. So that was how we were going to get our Horror Nights fixed this year. Um, what was fun about it was that same night when we discovered the... Uh, well, I think we played the Universal one a couple nights, and then we started branching out. Like, what else do they have on here? Yeah. So we started looking for other theme parks. We started looking for Knott's. We started looking for Six Flags, you know, all these theme parks. And then we, we, we searched Disney, and there was a ton of Disney ones. Yeah. Um, And we've gotten into a lot of them now, and these guys put in tons of work. Like, it, the, I've tried building maps on this game, and it's fucking time-consuming and very hard. Yeah. You have to be, like, really known into the game, but I don't know. I think we've had a lot of fun on Roblox. We've yeah, had a definitely. lot of cool spot-on things. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It has, and we've gotten to play with a lot of you guys in the community, um, uh, and especially in the beginning, and I, I'm pretty sure later on in the year we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up again where we, we can just hang out and Zoom call and just do that. Uh, I know since the off-season we'll be a little less busy now, so we'll have more time to do that. Um, yeah, definitely. But, man, uh, actually, the real reason we came out to uh, Arizona, um, well, for starters, to hang out with Sammy. I have not seen Sammy in, like, seven months, like we said in the beginning. Um, but we are, and you know, the video's probably already out. Maybe not. I don't know yet. Um, if it's not, that's awkward. But, you know, if it is, then go check it out. Go check it out, yeah. Uh, but we, uh, they have a haunt out here called Fear Farm that's put on by 13th Floor. And I think 13th Floor has another full on event too right they have yeah, two events out here 13th floor phoenix, 13th floor phoenix. Um, obviously if you guys know the name 13th floor haunted hayride if you guys are from the los angeles area um, but they have haunts all over united states um, big company uh, and sammy was telling me about fear farm so uh, tomorrow as of this recording we're gonna go check out fear farm and um, well sammy's already been uh, so i'm gonna be going for the first time i'm excited uh, to get my last little bit of haunt fix before haunt season for us officially ends i mean yeah. for a lot of people it ended last saturday but for me it's gonna end this saturday so yeah. um i'm excited man uh yeah, it'll be a good time. what can you tell us a little bit about fear farm a little sneak preview a little sneak preview we're gonna have four mazes three houses and uh one uh corn maze one corn maze and you said the houses are long the houses are pretty long yeah and is it like is, is it all dirt area or was it yeah, it's in like a dirt area, okay. um, but like you go between scenes, um, in the houses, and then the 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 corn maze is uh, you got to find your own way out. So good luck. That's gonna be fun. The other ones like are they like got people in there scaring you too? Yeah, yeah. it's clown themed. Oh, that chainsaws. should be fun. Chainsaws? Chainsaws. Fuck yeah, dude. We haven't gotten a lot of chainsaws this season. I'm kind of stoked for that. So uh, I think we've gotten a few at Urban Legends, a few at Hayride. I want to say another haunt did him, but I don't remember. Yeah, but I think what makes the corn maze terrifying is uh, they'll purposely throw you the wrong way. Yeah, that's going to be fun. So uh, I guess he is spending easily an hour in that. Yeah, it could be an hour. <laughs> could it be could two be 30 up. minutes. It okay, let, two so let's make sure we do the mazes first before we go through the corn maze. No, yeah, they don't. They You have to do it a certain way. Okay. You go maze, 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 and then corn maze. And they basically they know that tell you when you go to the corn maze. Uh, be, this will be the longest. Yeah, this will be the longest. That's going to be fun. I don't don't know if anyone watches out here in Phoenix or Arizona in that matter, so I don't know if we'll be noticed or not. Luckily not, because if we are noticed, then they're going to purposely send us in the wrong way. I think they're going to do it regardless, but... Yeah, they, they will. Uh, yeah. So what you been up to, man? What's what's Arizona? How's Arizona treating you? It's good, bro. It's really good. I've been just been working a lot. Uh, been chilling, chilling. Obviously, this week has been focused on the things that are going on around us, right? Um, but outside of that, playing video games. Um, really, anything, anything fun? Uh, I just started Fallout New Vegas again. Oh, was it on Game Pass or? It's on Game Pass. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's been fun because I like Fallout a lot. That was like one of the most popular Fallout games ever made, wasn't it? Uh, it's between that one and Fallout Three, I think. 
No one liked Fallout 4? Oh, uh, some people did. I wasn't a fan of it. They uh, added some noob things to it, like building and stuff, that I was just like, oh, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, no. Yeah, I like I like to shoot things and adventure around, and that's what makes Fallout fun. Right. And you get to pretty much pick your own destiny, because you can be like a good guy, a bad guy, or kind of neutral. Right. Um, yeah, man. Um, well, I could say this, in California, we missed you this haunt season. Definitely. I did definitely miss... Uh, the haunts, I you know, I got to see some of some of the walkthroughs and yeah, I really, I really wish you would have been there in person to see a lot of them. I think you would have had a really good time. I would have had a really great time. I can guarantee that. Yeah, I mean, Pirates Cave this year, dude. Our, our boys at Pirates Cave, shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, they fucking did an amazing job this year. Well, I mean, if they chased Maybe. your mom into her car, I think that's considered a win. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny story. Uh, I took my mom to Pirates Cave and I told her that the actors don't like chase you or anything. Uh, it turns out that night they happen to be chasing people. Um, socially distant, of course. Yeah. But um, it, it, she got mad at me after, and I'm like, they didn't do that opening night. So. Yeah, I mean, they definitely did that when we went, but like, I wouldn't anticipate your mom or your sister to be a running type. So, my mom is just really scared of a lot of things. My sister, Marissa, is getting used to more things. Yeah. So that was yeah. She's not too. She's not as scared as she used to be. Yeah. But um, yeah, she uh. My mom was like in the car and she had the doors locked and everything. That's so funny. I have to say though, I think the two, uh, I mean, Pirates Cave is probably my number three on my, my top three this year. Um, I don't even think if I should have a listing because they were all so good in their own various ways, honestly. The two mazes we went through this year, or, or we went through like three mazes, um, Corona Haunt, uh, Direct Society, and uh, Fear Farm. Yeah. Or Flesh Yard, I'm sorry, not Fear Farm. Yeah. Uh, Flesh Yard. Uh, we had a blast. Flesh Yard, their actors were just on point. They were doing an amazing job, and we got a really good walkthrough out of that. Uh, Corona Haunt, dude, their set designs were beautiful, and it was so cool walking through that story of Shadow Mountain. Uh, it was heavily inspired by The Thing, which I thought was awesome. Uh, things, John Carpenter's Thing is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And uh, Drex Society, dude, they... Really gave us the vibe of the Universal Monsters this year a lot. Yeah, I was I saw, watched all the walkthroughs. They were really fun. Yeah, they were. I still got a behind the scenes video I'm gonna release from uh, Drake Society that we got a lights on tour. Yeah. Uh, just been kind of lazy this week. Oh, I think yeah. I think mentally I was just preparing for this trip. Well, yeah, it's been a lot of we. It's been a lot for everyone. Mentally. It's been a lot for everyone. Yeah. Um. So, but uh, what we are doing on the channel right now this week, uh, or at least we have been all week. Uh, at least last week, uh, the last five days, is we've been releasing Ghostbusters gameplay. Uh, from the Ghostbusters video game. I felt that appropriate to release it on both Mad Slash Era and Knights of Horror because um, for those who went through the Ghostbusters maze last year, uh, it was <laughs> this Halloween I was getting a lot of Ghostbusters vibes. Just I watched both movies and then like, I really started playing the game more. Uh, such a fun game. I think I recorded the first two Let's Plays like in August and just like recently just started recording more. So uh, fun. Yeah, uh, I've had a lot of fun doing that. Um, what else did we do? Stranger Things experience, fucking amazing. Yeah, I, I can only. I yeah. wish I went to that. Yeah, um, that was amazing. The haunted car wash in uh, Huntington Beach, fucking Bro, awesome. I've watched like everyone's video on that. Like, I really wish we had that here because that dude was so lit. Our uh, homie, shout out to Forrest. Forrest was actually working it. Oh, well, shout out to Forrest. Good old Forrest, man. Uh, he actually hit me up, um, telling me about it and. I thought that was cool. He, we actually had an interaction. He's the clown that I don't know if you watched our video. He's the clown that opened the door and everything, in the beginning, with the baseball. Was he the one bat. that brought Rob out? Uh, no, but he was there when it happened. The uh, one that brought Rob out was wearing a mask, like a white mask and everything. This the guy. He had like long uh, red hair. Forrest had long red hair, and he had a baseball bat. I don't remember because it's been a while since I watched the video. But yeah, it was funny because uh, in the video, Robin locks the door. And he looked at her like, you realize I could still unlock the door throughout the inside of the car because the window was rolled down. He unlocked the door, opened the door. And oh, like, he's the one that went inside the car. Yeah, it was hilarious, dude. Like, I, I give major props to Forrest, man. He fucking made that experience so much fun. But um, there was a lot of a, a lot of things. My favorite, I think my favorite one was the one that right at the end. And he goes, oh. the guy opens the door. What the <laughs> frick when we're getting the car aired out? Like, yeah, I was like, what the hell? He just did that. Well, I don't think he expected your door to be open. I don't think he did either. But then he, he saw it was. He's like, I'm going to capitalize on this. 
I, I, I think a lot of them will just mess with your doorknob. No, I actually, I think I saw one video on Instagram because I reached out a lot. They actually opened the door while their car was getting soaped. Oh. It looked fucking, I'm like, you're a fucking idiot if you leave your door unlocked going through this. You know there's going to be people in here doing that kind of shit. I mean, it's not going to hurt your interior, though. I mean, it was on the fucking door, so, like, most it's going to do is just be clean. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if it was on, the, like, the seats, if it was, like, the 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 fake leather. Yeah, it would mess it up a little bit. Yeah, but if it was leather, you'd be fine. But, no, I mean, that was fun. Um, had a lot of fun this haunt season, dude. I mean, and like I said, I, I was not mad with anything we went through this year because I was just making the most of what we had. No, definitely. I think that's the important part is make, uh, make use of what you have. Yeah, so it, it was a very fun haunt season. I'm excited to be ending it with Fear Farm tomorrow and should be fun time. Hopefully. Hopefully you enjoy it. I hope so. I think I will. I mean, if it's 13th floor, I mean, they don't really disappoint me at all. Yeah. But uh, that was fun. But uh, I can tell you guys right now, and this is going to be a, a first announcement. I mean, uh, we are growing every day with the Knights of Horror. Um, and we have a new member going to be joining us on the channel pretty soon. Yes. The first uh, woman of the Knights of Horror, which I think is an absolute honor. Um She's a scare actress, and she's done it all. She's been in the haunt industry for 15 years, and we cannot wait to introduce you to her. Um, and when the time comes, you will see it on one of the podcasts. And uh, she's got a lot she wants to get off her mind uh, with the haunt world. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I think me and Sammy made a good choice on this one. Yeah, definitely. Really I think choice. it's a great choice. She's going to yeah. bring not only some great things to the podcast, um, but she'll also be bringing her own original stuff, which is a uh, yeah. Um, if you're sick of seeing Tony's face, like I always am, right? Um, you know, you'll get to see other people's faces. Yeah, I, I'm trying to work with everyone. I mean, we got a couple new series in the work. Um, one we might be actually filming today. So, uh, but we're gonna be trying to do shoot the shit more. Uh, and hopefully, get Allison on shoot the shit. Her name's Allison, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> There's that. But uh, we're gonna try to get her on shoot the shit more. Maybe make her. Uh, not even maybe. I want to make her a. Uh, permanent person for shoot the shit yeah i know definitely we want to i want to i mean we always want to have fun here's the thing about shoot the shit i was on uh anchor the other day and it seems like a lot of you guys love this podcast i mean at least for us it's not like our thousands or thousands of views but it's more views than we actually get on mindless horror and i was shocked by that i'm kind of shocked by that too and we've only, I think, released like three or four episodes on the platform for digital. But you guys like Shoot the Shit, and we like talking about whatever comes up in our mind. Because we, we have an opinion about everything. We do. And uh, I'm glad you guys like it. We're going to keep doing it more. Um, and, yeah, should be fun. Um, especially with uh, Allison coming in. It's going to be a whole new perspective now. So I'm excited to see what she has to say and yeah. share her experience. And Yeah, uh, you won't have to hear as much of Tony. You yeah, you won't have to hear as much of me. Because uh, she... She actually did say that she loves to talk, and I'm like, I'm glad I don't yeah. have to talk no more. Yeah, um, I, I don't like to talk. Clearly, yeah, clearly. Just kidding. Clearly, um, no. But I, I'm excited now. We have we have now. What is that? I think seven people in Nights of Horror. Wait, seven? Well, Robert, our photographer. Oh, went, that's right. But you know, I mean, obviously with COVID and stuff, yeah. we haven't been able to do a lot of photography with him. I was but like, oh yeah, there's Robert. I forgot about Robert. Robert is still. A Sorry, Robert. Uh, he he made all of our logos for 2020. And he's still a, fi a, a a very important member. Important. Important. No, but we have we have a good crew going, and um, I'm just I, I I I'm so happy and pleased with everyone in the crew. They've done a lot of hard work this season, um, everyone, and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm hoping we can go big, because I would love to pay you guys. I really would. Yeah, I currently get paid in insults. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> now you're gonna make me an abusive boss. Thanks, Sammy. Me too. <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's a very serious topic. I'm just joking. It is a very serious topic. I'm not abusive. I'm very fair with everyone. Yeah, except every video idea I have is, uh, that's the best idea you've ever had. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to make me look horrible on camera, huh? I haven't seen you in seven months in hey, person. Bro, that's my job. Just, just trying to make me look horrible on camera. But that's my job. I don't know, man. We have a lot of good things coming this uh, off season. Uh, I want to announce right now in December. I haven't chosen a date yet, but in December we're going to be doing a Krampus live stream, our, our annual Krampus, Krampus live stream. This yeah. is the third annual, I think. This is the third year in a row we've done it. Yeah. Um, 
And it's just a tradition at the Nights of Horror. We, yeah, we, and every single time. I only watch parts of it. Yeah. I mean, because so we're always maybe talking. I'll, maybe I'll get the entire movie in eventually. Eventually. And maybe a couple more years, you'll just have everything pieced together. So nah. you know, you'll see it. But I just know he kind of shows up. Some stuff happens. And, and then, then they end up in a snow globe. A snow globe. Yeah. That, I mean, that's all you really need to know. <laughs> um, family's greedy. Can't stand each other. Uh, what's her name died, though? The... Uh, Oh, the mo- one of the the yeah, yeah. she was the the maid on two and a half men. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace. Rest in peace. She was hilarious, but yeah, we have a Krampus live stream coming up in uh, December, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. I'm really excited for that, and uh, we, we're working on a new show right now. It's a it's a mix between Beyond Belief fact or fiction and uh, the Osbournes want to believe. Uh, I, I've gotten inspiration from both those shows. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is I'm going to get members of the Knights of Horror, and we're going to watch ghost videos and or anything paranormal. It doesn't have to be ghosts. It could be aliens, uh, urban legends, whatever it is. Uh, Bigfoot. A lot of there's a big, big controversy on Bigfoot. Um, and basically, I'm going to show them four videos. They're uh, some of them will be real, some of them will be fake. Maybe all of them will be real. All of them will be fake. Uh, who knows? It's their job to decide which ones are real or fake, and. Um, they'll find out the answers at the end of every episode we film. So it's gonna be a fun time. They're all gonna be fake. And, and Sammy's head, they're all gonna be fake because nothing is real. But yeah, we have a lot of good stuff coming to the sh- uh, to the to the thing, and uh, I can announce right now, uh, Mace Treatments will be returning for a season two. Ooh, uh, don't know when we're gonna start. Uh, don't know what we're doing. Don't know how we're doing. But it will I don't know when we're going to start pre-production on that, but we should start it soon. Uh, and I don't know who's going to be in it this season. Um, but we're going to be on the lookout for some good people. If you want to be on it, you know where to find us. Yeah. If you got some maze ideas, we're going to... We're gonna. What should, how many people do we need to do in order to like get it to the end of like the final two? Is it 10? We got to no, do 10? Eight. eight or 10? Eight. What eight do we to do? clean eight four two. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna choose eight people this season, and we're gonna be doing season two of maze treatments. Yeah. That should be fun. Because if we do ten, then we, then then a person has to then someone has to have a buy. I think uh, for the first episode, we have to have Connor Florida on as a guest judge. But this season, we're gonna do it a lot differently. We're not gonna be the ones that vote for the mazes. The fans are. So every week when we drop an episode, whenever that comes out, I'm thinking maybe March or April yeah. uh, leading into the uh, haunt season for summer. Uh, every episode that comes out that um, that day, I will release a poll on both Instagram and Twitter, and whoever has the most votes wins, and we will announce the winner on the, the next episode. And when we get to the finals, um, I will launch the poll ahead of time and whoever wins that will ultimately get the the vote to win. Is there any way you can keep the uh, poll um, where they don't see the results? What do you mean? So, like for example, you can vote, but you won't see like how much percentage of the vote is actually been received. I don't think so for Instagram or Twitter. Why? I was gonna say that way. There's a surprise surprise result. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. But season two, Mace Treatment's coming. New series on the channel, Knights of Horror, Fact or Fiction, coming uh, pretty soon, actually. I think we're going to record the first episode today. Uh, Shoot the Shit's returning uh, with brand new episodes, maybe bi-weekly, I'm thinking. That way, we we gives us a week to get stuff to talk about. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Miles Horror Podcast will still be going. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of guests lined up, and I got to contact a couple other people. Uh, but we have some guests coming up. My Lost Horror Podcast will be coming out every week still. Um, I'm thinking about bringing back uh, Horror Icon Mashup. Maybe. We'll see what happens. That's uh, one that I want to. And maybe some more history videos and some more timeline videos. So Oof. it's a lot to work with there. And whatever you guys, let if there's something you guys want to see. You yeah, what do you guys want to see? Movie reviews, more live streams. You let us know. You, me shaving Tony's uh, head. What do you got against my hair, dude? Well, we already know what I have against your hair. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe once a month at the end of every month we should do a live stream. We can. The last weekend of every month. I mean, I can't guarantee when. Obviously, I mean, I, we can't guarantee every member will be available, but yeah. whoever is available, let's do something. That way we keep the vibe going, you know. The positive. Vibe. I just want this to be a safe environment for everyone. You know, there's already a lot of stress in the world. 
this can be the safe haven you can come to and enjoy but, but what if your hair makes me stressed oh god i'm just kidding i know two people who like it okay yeah they also think you're a, a decent human being i'm a very decent human being you're slightly decent okay i'll take it you're above average <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> Um, anyway, that is going to do it today for today's episode of Shoot the Shit. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, it's been a while since we did that podcast, and we're planning on bringing it back. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things got announced right now. <laughs> New member coming onto the show. Uh, multiple shows getting renewed. Uh, pilots. Uh, podcasts coming back. A lot of good stuff announced. Yeah. And you got know what else is good? What else is good? Right below, we got this beautiful, beautiful merch. If you Merch. want something, get it. I know the weather's about to get a little nippy sweater out there. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Get yourself a Knights of Horror sweater. East versus West, Knights of Horror, Mindless Horror Podcast. Podcast. Eat, sleep, sleep. Don't, don't get scared, scared. repeat, because I am the reigning, the reigning, undisputed, try not to get scared, champion of the world. Of the world. That's my Paul Heyman right there. Yeah. It's, probably, it's probably better than Paul Heyman, in my opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. You know, I, I, you know, I, I try. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, but um, in closing, like I said, grab that merch. Hit us up on Twitter at Knights of Horror and on Instagram at The Knights of Horror. Um, well, and shoot, you know, d- shoot us a DM, and we're always happy to talk. Shoot us a DM. Yeah. I, 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 about a week ago, I told you guys that uh, if you guys just want to get away, hit us up on Instagram. Yeah. Me and Sammy will be happy to reply. You're most likely going to talk to Tony, but if you want to talk to me specifically, let me know. I'll, I'll I will send him you. a text message to get on the Instagram, and you can talk with Sammy. Yeah, you're most likely going to talk uh, to Tony. Also, if you want to talk to us further, uh, hit us up. We have a Discord uh, for yeah. the community, and I'm going to start getting more active on that. I know I was a little less active on it during haunt season, but yeah. everybody knows why. But yeah, we have a Discord. Hit us up uh, on Instagram for the link for that, and I can happily invite you guys in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel, and that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video. And also, what should they do to this video, Sammy? they got to hit that like button, and then drop a comment about what you want to see as we go into 2021. Sammy, it has been amazing to be back in studio to podcast in person. It has been, the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. Thanks for hosting. Always. And it's Anytime. been fun. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.